lesson 5.4, Solving Special Systems of Linear Equations, you should be on page 254. In this lesson, you will determine the numbers of solutions of linear systems. You will use linear systems to solve real life problems. First of all, let's talk about the numbers of solutions of linear systems. Up to this point, you have learned that linear systems have one solution. So that's what I highlighted in yellow. You might remember at the beginning of the chapter, we learned how to graph a system. And we found where those two lines met at a point. These problems had one solution. The last couple sections, we've been working on these very kinds of problems where we get one answer to the problem. What this lesson, 5.4, is going to address is that you do not always get just one answer to a system of linear equations. You could get, let me circle it, you could get no solution. Like if we were to graph and the lines were both, the two lines we graphed were parallel, that would mean that these lines never touch. There would be no solution in that case. Or you could graph the, the two lines and they're one on top of the other. That would be infinitely many solutions. That's when you graph each line and they're both the same. So we're not necessarily learning a bunch of new stuff today, but what we are learning is that when you solve a system, it's not always going to work out to one nice ordered pair solution. It could have no solution, or it could have infinitely many. We're going to really um, study these two cases specifically more in this lesson. So let's take a look at an example problem here where we're solving a system. And let's say we were solving this system and I asked you to graph it. Well, the graph's down here. Let me uh, arrow down to here. Okay, so for the first equation, the y-intercept is 1 and the slope is 2. So they graph that here. Here's the y-intercept 1 and up 2 over 1, slope 2. There's the first line. I'll call that line A. Okay. Line B has a y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of 2. Let me graph that. So down 5, there's my y-intercept, and then up 2 over 1. There's that line. We'll call that line B. You notice these are parallel. These do not have a solution then, okay, because they do not meet at a point. Okay, so this would be a no solution problem. Now let's say you didn't graph it. Let's say you were like, wow, I can... This is easy to substitute. I have one variable isolated. I can take 2x plus 1 and substitute it in over here, and I could have 2x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5. Let's solve that. I don't want variables on each side. Okay, take away the 2x, and oops, all my variables disappeared. Is this true? And you're probably saying, nah, that's not true, okay? That means that this problem has no solution. It's matching the graph, okay? No solution. When you have systems with no solution, another way of saying that is we have an inconsistent system. It's, that's a no solution problem. It's an inconsistent system. Obviously, it's possible then, if, you know, if we have no solution, you could also have infinitely many solutions. Let's take a look at this case. Okay, let's, let's say we're going to graph here. So I'm going to rewrite these both in slope-intercept form. So to rewrite the first equation in slope-intercept form, I'd have to simply add 2x to each side, and I would get y equals 2x plus 3. Let's go to the second equation now. Let's solve that for y. So first step, I had to add 4x to each side. So I had 2y equals 4x plus 6, which you can see right here. And then I divided everything by 2 to get y by itself. Look what happened. I get the exact same equation. My slope is 2 and my y-intercept is 3. So when I graph both these lines, it's going to be one line on top of the other. Now, when you have one line on top of the other, and obviously that would be infinitely many solutions, the phrase for that is a consistent, independent, I'm sorry, consistent, I meant to say dependent system is another way 
of saying infinitely many solutions, a consistent dependent system. Now, let's say we had done the same question, but not by graphing. Let's say you had tried eliminating, okay? When you look to eliminate here, you notice, wait a minute, none of these variables have the same coefficient. So the book was saying, let's take the top equation and multiply everything by negative 2. So equation A would turn into 4x minus 2y equals negative 6. Equation B, we didn't have to change. Now, we have elimination available. We could add and eliminate the y's. Negative 2y plus 2y eliminates. But then look what happens here. 4x plus negative 4x also eliminates. You get 0 on the left. And negative 6 plus 6 is 0. That's a true statement. That would mean infinitely many solutions. I have a consistent, independent system. I wanted to go back to this picture before I continue because this is super important when you think about graphing. I want you to notice something. When you have one solution, we have two lines meeting. Does it make sense that the slopes must be different to have one solution? Look at that for a minute. The lines have to have a different angle. The slopes must be different to get one solution. However, if the slopes are the same, so put, I'm going to put same slopes here. Same slopes is when you either get no solution or infinitely many. So how can you tell, you know, the difference? Well, look here at this picture. These definitely have the same slope, but look at the y-intercepts. They're different. So if you have same slope, different y-intercept, then you have no solution. So you can use this just by looking at the slope and the y-intercept. You can determine if a problem has no solution. Now over here, this would be same slope. Let's look at the y-intercept here. Well, it's the same for both. It's one on top of the other. Same y-intercept. Okay. So if you have same slope, same y-intercept, you have infinitely many solutions. So by looking at the slopes, you ought to be able to determine if there's one solution or if you have one of these cases. And then the y-intercept would tell you, is it no solution or infinitely many solutions? That's important to know because it can speed up your work. Normally, I have you pause the video and try these, but here I'm going to do these with you. Solve the system of linear equations. So let's use some of the things we just talked about. So I'm going to start with this. Let me just rewrite these. This would be y equals negative 1x plus 3, because I'm taking away x from each side. And then my second equation, I've got to take away 2x from each side. 2y equals negative 2x plus 6. If I divide everything by 2, I get y equals negative 1x plus 3. Look what happened. I have the same slope and the same y-intercept this problem has infinitely many solutions. Okay, I didn't even have to work it out with a method. I could just tell by looking at slope and y-intercept. Let's go to this one. Okay, uh, here I have a slope of negative 1. Let's solve this uh, for y. 2y would equal negative 2x plus 4 because I, I would take away 2x first. Divide everything by 2, y would equal negative 1x plus 2. Now look at the slope here is negative 1. This has the same slope, but look at the y-intercepts. They're different. This is a no solution problem for number 2. There's no solution for that because the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. Okay. Um, this one, let's take a look here. Uh, this looks like it would have a solution to me offhand because if I look at the first equation, y would equal negative 1x plus 3. But when I take the second equation, take away x, let me solve this for y. 2y would equal negative 1x plus 4, but now i got to divide by 2. I'm getting y equals negative half x plus 2. You notice the slopes aren't the same for these. 
That means I have one solution. Okay, I got to figure it out. It's a solve. So I can substitute. Let's just take this and plug it in here. So negative 1x plus 3 would have to equal negative half x plus 2. And I can, uh, let's get all the variables on one side. I'll add half, I'm sorry, I'll add 1x. So 3 would equal half x plus 2. I can subtract the 2. Half x would equal 1, and I can divide by half. That means x is 2. And if x is 2, I can plug in a 2 up here. 2 plus 1 is 3. Y is 1. It looks like the answer is 2, 1. Let's check it in the second equation. If I put a 2 in here and a 1 in here, yep, that does give me 4. So 2, 1 would be the solution. Final problem here. Let's see if we can solve this. Now, in my first equation, you notice my slope is negative 10. Let's see what happens here when I solve for y. I'll take away 10x, and wow, my slope is negative 10 here as well. So these are parallel. That means there is no solution or infinitely many. This has a slope of 2. This has a slope of 10. I misspoke. This has a y-intercept of 2, I meant to say. This has a y-intercept of 10. These are different y-intercepts. So these are parallel lines that don't touch. No solution for number four, okay? So you can use slope and y-intercept to help you solve and determine is it one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. Okay, let's talk about solving real-life problems using, you know, because sometimes real-life problems, and this can be frustrating, they don't always work out. Okay, so this lesson is going to show you that, hey, you could have a real-life problem. It might not automatically work out to a nice answer for you. That's, that's real life. It doesn't always work. So let's check what's going on here. So we have the perimeter of a trapezoid piece of land is 48 kilometers. Remember, perimeter means if I add up all these sides. So you can see the book's doing that. They're adding up all the sides. They're combining the like terms together. And they're getting 6x plus 12 equals 48. And then we see the perimeter of a rectangular piece of land is 144 kilometers. So in other words, if we add all these up, we should get 144. So you can see they're doing that here. They combine the like terms. So here's equation 1. You can see it. And here's equation 2. Okay. Um, they said to solve, they're solving it by graphing. I'm going to solve it really quick by elimination. I think that's easier. If I multiply the top equation by 3, look what would happen. 3 times 6 is 18, and I have 18x and 18x I could eliminate. So let's multiply the top equation by 3. So 18x plus 36y would equal 48 times 3. If I'm doing my mental math right, it's 144. The bottom equation is 18x plus 36y equals 144. Well, let's subtract and look what happens. My x's eliminate, my y's eliminate, that means I get 0, and 144 minus 144 is 0. This is telling me this problem has infinitely many solutions. So I can't just get one correct answer to this problem. There's infinitely many uh, xy pairings that would make this true, okay? So this is one of those frustrating situations where we're looking for an answer and I can't get just an answer to this, okay? I'm going to pause the video here. If we have questions, make sure you ask in class.